a Roman house tutorial, 2,000 year old middle class family's Roman domus or house complete with vegetables, atriums, impluviums, tabernums, all these words we're going to learn in this video, the layout, the architecture of an actual Roman house built in Minecraft, block by block tutorial, sit back, relax and enjoy. So let's learn how to build this. Now a typical Roman house had just one family in it and lots of little rooms, all with unique little purposes. By the way, I'm marking this out in logs. Don't do it, use orange hardened clay because um, I wanna lay it out so you guys can copy it block for block. But you don't have to do that while watching the video. Just right now you can relax, sit back and enjoy it because I have prepared a picture which shows you all the measurements in you need. Really just two main ones. 58 by 28 and then you can count the blocks individually because as I said I've laid it out in wall blocks and you've got some little colonnades or columns using the wall blocks to do as well. But let's lay out all the rooms, it's so cool. First of all a vestibulum, the entranceway into this Roman domus or house and this is where you would receive your guests. Here would be some uh, a taberna, two taber tabernae, <laughs> little shops at the front, you could rent them out and get some income. Uh, tablinum, this is where you'd have an office, you'd receive your guests and talk to them and so on, right in the middle of the house. A kalina, kind of a dark, smoky little room, it was the kitchen, that's what kalina means. Uh, the triclinium, is it just simply a dining room, that would be over there in the typical Roman house. We'd have lots of little cubic Cooloms, <laughs> cubiculums, just little bedrooms and maybe bathrooms. These alas were kind of open rooms at the side, round about this massive atrium in the middle of the house, open. The Andron was a little corridor, and this Persitilium was a big open colonnaded space at the back of the house, very fancy indeed. Exhedra, kind of a fancy meeting room, maybe a spare dining room, a summer dining room, if you will. Remember, it's gonna be hot, a Mediterranean place. Now, what I'm building here, I'm gonna mark in all the floor bricks right now. This is the Impluvium. And the Impluvium was a shallow pool in the middle of this open air atrium. And this little pool was used to catch rainwater. You can see this picture uh, on the right is a picture from Pompeii in Italy, the 2000 year old town that was completely covered up by ash. And on the left, kind of an artist's impression of what that room would look like. Very fancy room indeed, tiled, mosaiced floors, but you would collect the rainwater and it would give you a nice source of fresh water. By the way, if you wanna copy this block for block, this picture, helpfully, is in the description and you can see all the blocks that I've used for the floor throughout the entire build. So use that and get your floor done and then we can move on. So let me tell you about this impluvium. It's in the atrium, it's open to the sky. You're gonna collect all your rainwater there. And then really the entrance to the house is called the vestibulum, connected by a corridor as well. A little picture here of one from Pompeii. You can see right through to the garden at the back of the house as well, very fancy. And it was done on purpose so you could see how grand the house was. Uh, just as you stood at the entrance, you could see all the way through the house. So. This is the atrium really, um, columns supporting the roof. Some roofs weren't supported by columns. Some of them were uh, a clever system of rafters as well. But I'm gonna use columns in this particular one. Now at the front of the house, what I'm just uh, paving there were these turberne or one turberna, little shops. I've connected the shops to the atrium. Probably they weren't connected. They'd be completely separate and there'd be little stores or shops. Could be storage places, but most often shops with an entrance onto the street. People could come along and buy the goods in a taberna. Now the little rooms at the side that I've just been flooring are called, one would be called a cubiculum, and it would be a little bedroom, or maybe a latrine, latrine, and that's a picture of one from Pompeii. Now this middle room, the tablinum, very special room, large reception room, situated between the atrium and the garden at the back. It generally had no separating walls, maybe you'd have curtains, there's a picture of one, and you can see some partitions, maybe some things that could be um, bent backwards, like uh, screen doors. So you could have some extra ventilation if you 
wanted. Oh, there's the kitchen again. But yeah, you want extra ventilation because the tablinum was an office and it was going to be very, very hot in there. But again, the partition screen is very clever because from the vestibule, you can, or the vestibulum, you can see all the way through to the garden at the back. Now, later on in the Roman area, this the triclinium, the dining room, became important. They didn't tend to use them in early Roman times, but I believe later on they liked to sit on, lie on their sides on kind of couches to eat. <laughs> Propped up by your left arm and you could eat with your right arm or, or, or vice versa. Anyway, now we're on to the peristylium. Peristylium. Peristylium, that's the one. <laughs> it's like the garden of the house. It was incorporated into the house. You might have a garden outside your house. The Romans had their gardens inside their house, surrounded by columns which supported the roof. And they would grow herbs and flowers, particularly roses and violets and lilies. You could have small statues and statuettes and other ornamental artwork or outdoor furniture would be in this garden. On a sunny day, you could even use it as an outside dining area. And the exhedra at the back was another kind of a spare, fancy meeting room. Or it could be a dining room or just somewhere to chill out and relax and get away from the hot Mediterranean sun. Now, you may have noticed this little sneaky door at the back. It's the posticum, usually positioned at the side of the house. Could be where humble visitors, slaves and servants come in. Or even the master of the house could sneak out if uh, he didn't want to be detected by the people at the front in the street. Sneaky side door, the posticum. Okay, turn, I'm turned my logs. You should have built this in orange hardened clay already. And I'm just going to add two layers of orange hardened clay. And it represents the, the mud bricks that this uh, house would have been made of. And then on top of that, we're going to add a layer of quartz. And I'm going to switch into shaders mode now, now that we don't need to see the difference between all the similar white blocks, which I did. Uh, kept shaders off so you could see the, the difference between them. So yeah, a layer of quartz. This would be the same mud, but we've painted it white. And the Romans loved to paint their walls. When I was in uh, Pompeii, I loved to see all the decorations on the wall. All the gold, the red as well. I, I remember this vivid red. I can't believe it's still there after 2,000 years. If you're ever in Italy, don't miss out Herculaneum or Pompeii. Absolutely amazing. Okay, so we've got one layer, two, three, in fact, four layers of quartz on top. I'm going to add some extra bedrooms in the middle of the house. A Roman domus or house was often just one story, unless it was a massive fancy villa, which this is not a villa, this should just be a house. But we're going to add some extra rooms anyway, just to create a bit of height and a bit of interest in this Minecraft build. Using wall blocks, going to increase these columns, some temporary glass blocks, and then some white shirkle, shir, shulker, 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 whatever those things are, shir, oh, I, I give up. The ones beginning with shir, or shulker blocks, add them on, <laughs> they're kind of fancy mosaic kind of things. Round to the peristylium at the back, add these columns up four high, and then temporary blocks, and then the shirkle, shirkler block. How could I never say it? Wow. I actually went into the inventory and I tried to memorize the name of this block. <laughs> I failed. I can't remember it. You're all going to be laughing in the comments now, I know. It's called a shirker. Shirker. What? Oh, it's too much. It's too much for me. I can't do it. I can't do it. There we go. The Roman house is looking kind of cool. Very easy, basic build, but absolutely fascinating when you start to get into the research and you work out all the subtle differences between the different types of rooms and the way you could build the roofs as well. A lot of difference there. Okay, last little task here. You can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm sure you can cope with this yourself. Just adding on um, some extra blocks above the doorways, especially the big doorways um, between the atrium and the tabernum. Um, there we go. Just making sure that that looks all complete. Very easy task indeed. And one more sweeping look over this house. Just a few more tasks remaining. We're going to add on the roof now. And the roof is just simply going to be made from uh, brick as well. Before we do the brick, these alley or little weird side rooms, we're not too sure what they were for. They kind of faded out of um, use in houses as the centuries rolled by. But I'm going to use them for staircases. So just tweak the camera round here, not too far camera, please. And uh, camera, camera, <laughs> the replay mod, sometimes tricky. But anyway, I'm going to add a layer of um, 
simply some slabs, wooden slabs there to form this little bedroom area. Double bedrooms separated by a wall in the middle. And I'm going to make two staircases in each ala um, at the sides. These kind of ala were just open side rooms. We're not really sure, as I said, what they're for. But there's a dividing uh, wall in the middle. And I can make a little um, cubiculum at the side, a kind of an ante room as well to that bedroom on the right and then the bedroom on the left here is getting its own private staircase as well so just carve that in as best you can um, I don't want to take away from your own creativity so make your own staircase and hopefully you're gonna make your own Roman house and join in with me as well I would like to make a bigger one as well like a big Roman villa very fancy so that layer of uh, bricks for the roof very important that goes on the side of the shark, shark club shark, those boxes, okay, that goes on the side of them, and then the roof just continues up. And then I'm gonna go to the outside of the house and just add on the bricks in this fashion, and then you just bring them up until these bricks, uh, these brick slabs meet the brick slabs in the middle, and that's the roof done. It's as simple as that. So it's slab, slab, slab. Do it, do it, do it, add them on. Little Yoda flying about. And these ones at the front of the house meet in a single slab in the middle, very aesthetically pleasing. And you can see the little gap there where the rainwater would rush down into the atrium and fill up your impluvium when it rained to give you that fresh rainwater. It would be so cool. It would just keep you nice and fresh and shaded this house in the hot Mediterranean sun. A very clever design indeed. And very secure house as well, because there's no windows at the side. We'll put in some windows later on in the, the upper bedrooms there, but no windows. You get all the light from these houses, really, from the peris peristylium. <laughs> some of these words are tricky, by the way, and I might have started to mess up already. And you get all your light from the atrium as well. I don't forget, 2,000 years ago, you wouldn't have had slabs of glass to make your windows. I don't think glass was even... Um, well, it probably would have been invented by this point, but very hard to make into into big slabs to make into windows. So here's the, the roof as well. Just um, start your roof at the sides of the house and work your way up. And it kind of just meets, doesn't meet very aesthetically pleasing. Kind of have these double blocks at the back there, but ha, so what? Not too worried about that. Let's have a quick uh, smidgen of a look inside here. It really comes alive when you see into this atrium. Just adding some uh, logs here, uh, wooden logs to represent the rafters, something that's gonna hold up the build. That's an easy stage um, to do as well. This would be a very fancy room, the heavily decorated room indeed. I'm gonna furnish this on this video as well. I'm gonna take you through the place and we're gonna furnish it. Um, I'll furnish the whole place and then take you through and show you, give you some ideas if you're gonna furnish it yourself. So onto the, um, the room at the back here, the Persa, what's the, what's the name, what's it called again? It's called a uh, Persatilium, <laughs> Peristilium, Peristilium, this garden at the back, you grow your herbs, you hang out, you could have a dining room here, some outdoor uh, eating al fresco, is that called al fresco? <laughs> There's too many Latin words going about in this video, that's for sure. So let's just spin the camera around here, not too far camera, oh, we can see the secret caves underneath. Uh, you would maybe have some cisterns. You could have that um, uh, impluvium, this shallow pool at the front of the house here, um, could actually drain into a big cistern where you could store your water. Oh, by the way, you'll have some extra jobs to do like that, some extra jobs at the back of the house, really just to fill up um, the gaps. Right, let's go through the furnishing. Um, first of all, the road. I noticed, noticed when I was in Pompeii, you had to kind of just jump across these <laughs> almost like stepping stones. All the horses and carts that would, would go along here, uh, but all the mud and dirt and detritus was kept away from your feet because you could just be on the pavement right here, the sidewalk. Um, so here's the taberna, and it's got a, a shop. So I put some furnaces in here as if they're baking cakes. We had these kind of weird holes as well. I remember seeing these. Um, I think there's like big ampules of olive oil and stuff like that. It was kind of weird. Anyway, another sh a shop there, and an identical shop there. You can see what I did. Into the vestibulum here. These, this bit here was kind of a fosses or a little uh, corridor linking the vest vestibulum or vestibule, we would call it, into this main room here, the atrium here. Really cool indeed. These shulker, shul shul shulker boxes. That's it, shulker boxes. Very cool. I wish I could get that mosaic f effect on the floor. 
and you can really see the bricks I've used, chisel quartz, pillared quartz, uh, here's the cube cubiculums, little bedrooms at this side, there we go, and then over here, splash into the impluvium, um, I've put a latrine or latrine or toilet in there, here's the alva here, um, oh, by the way, bit of a mistake here, um, you can't get up because <laughs> of that block there, so that's a bit of a mistake, you're going to have to improve that uh, if you copy me, here's the triclinium I think, the dining room, and the tabernum here, the big office, loads of paintings on the wall, and these um, kind of curtains would separate this, but you, you can see from the start of the build, you can see right through into the perist peristilium, <laughs> persitilium. <laughs> Talking of which, persitilium is right here, we've got some statues, some herbs growing, um, oh, this this little pool's given a special name as well, I can't quite remember, it begins with P. Pris Christine or something, oh I can't remember, anyway, um, here's your exhedra at the back and more cubiculums here which I've decorated, very simple, sometimes you get a kind of a mistake, mosaics, not mistakes, mosaics and patterns around the beds showing you where the rectangular bed would would be and that's pretty much the house, just the, uh, the posicum, posicum, the, the back door <laughs> I'm losing the plot here. This is called the fosses or andron, this little corridor linking the atrium to the back of the house. So you didn't have to go through and disturb the master of the house uh, in there. The colleen in the kitchen here, very smoky, very dark and cramped. Maybe the slaves would work there or your servants. And that is my Roman Domus. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like these kind of educational videos, um, then leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for more. And I will see you next time. Thank you so, so much for watching. Much appreciated. People who watch all the way to the end. Put the word Domus in the comments if you watched all the way to the end, and I will see you very shortly. Ciao, ciao. When the blocks be with you. Oh, we didn't do these rooms. <laughs> I didn't show you in here. I haven't furnished these. Little bedrooms. I didn't take you in. Let me take you in before you go. <laughs> I've done the whole blocks will be with you thing. <laughs> Extra bits of video. There's nothing to see. <laughs> Bye.